it actually started very early, where uh, in the mornings after the compound in my village, uh, I use my village now, also so, was being swept in the morning, very early in the morning. The gardener would sweep the entire compound. And it has this very smooth, long uh, broom max that forms a very nice pattern. And then it became my canvas. I will now go and have my own uh, drawings, mostly line drawings of faces. And I did that every time I see such a very clean uh, premises. And so from there, moved on to primary school. I was very good with the craft session in primary school. When it comes. Then secondary. In secondary school, yes, also, I loved the, the biology class. I loved the geography class. I loved all the subjects that had to do with uh, you uh, making a diagram or a sketch. We didn't really do fine arts, but we, out of curiosity, we went to the library, picked up books on art. And so that nurtured my interest. Those uh, early years, you know, encountering books in art. And then my father's calligraphy as a geographer had very good handwriting, all of that. And then going further, read comic books, loved to see good drawings, went to the library. So my artistic uh, interests and influences you know, became very robust. I go to town, I see sculptures by older artists like uh, Dubois, public sculptures. I go to the museum to see exhibitions. And then, so on and so forth, I started taking interest in things that are related to uh, drawing and painting, which are the early years. And, and then went further. After my secondary education at Tego Grammar School, we went to our chief polytechnic to read fine art and majored in painting. That was in 1984. I graduated. So ever since then, I've been uh, practicing. And then went further again to do a course in. Uh, Cultural administration, progressive course, course in cultural administration, and then. So that's been the uh, way, the summary of how one has uh, meandered and navigated himself in this very crowded uh, uh, community of uh, different talents and people. In terms of when I started professionally, first you must understand that uh, there ain't any. Um, for now, any recognized institution that satisfies you or uh, endorses you to say, oh, now you're a professional artist. I think once we have been able to identify ways, it's uh, say, okay, you have been practicing for long and you have tested the waters and survived by your art and you're declared a professional artist. I started my art career in 1985. That brought me to do commissions, embellishments, portrait paintings, just like any other starter, where you do a whole lot of things, group shows. I had my group show with the Italian Cultural Institute I had a group show in 1988 at the National Oil and Chemical Marketing Company. I've had group shows and then went uh, further to do a solo show at the uh, German Cultural Center, the Goethe Institute. That was around 1994. But the challenges I've faced as a professional artist most times has been um, having to navigate the economic waters and also, at the same time, having to consistently uh, try to educate uh, people, collectors now, and the public about what you are doing. It's uh, sometimes for my kind of art, which is, uh, which uh, I would say is a bit uh, 
not um, permit me to use this expression not uh, art for just anyone you have to be a bit cerebral you have to be a bit uh, you know acquit yourself with uh, other forms of art not just basic picture making art Aha. so I express myself humanity has always been at the center of my of my um, subjects I deal with from uh, human related experiences to uh, politics social commentary to environment and you know, sometimes I dwell on uh, injustice in society so I draw my inspiration from all of that so in, 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 in my formative years I had to contend with first you making pictures for those who just want pictures as a decorative object in their homes and then you move from there to expressing yourself and then you move from that point to establishing yourself and people recognizing your ideas and passing on their own information these are the processes which i had to go through you know from taking commissions of portrait painting to now painting portraits in my own way so that's the uh, uh, the chronicle of how so we'll say it was a big commercial at the start it can be consumed from the elementary to the sophisticated yeah understood I, by by the layman yes something that's why i say something elementary with all due respect to, to everyone who is there but something very basic something just picture making that hasn't gotten any uh, need for you to be schooled on the artist statement or anything to uh, understand uh, just like in music just like in music where you know you you you, you, you cannot just uh, i don't know but to grow and like classical music is something you have to cultivate you know otherwise it's easier to consume something that is very easy to dance to and deal with reading but more uh, so that's how uh, my art has evolved you know from very basic to, to more sophisticated uh. can you see discipline in today's work can you see order can you see commitment when you look at works of of of, of uh, now i'm not going to go i'm not going to european art pick the ife head pick the Benny bronze head and go and see attention to detail go and see patience and perseverance go you will see order you will see discipline you will see innovations in those works every work of art whether it's architecture fine art engineering these are testimonies to a people's resilience and sense of order and discipline so what are we my ancestors were challenged by the environment and that's why they came up with those masks that's why they came up with those images they were they were they were they, they were they were rendering a service to the to the altar and the spiritual being and the entertainment of society but also pointing in the right direction that is why their works are so relevant that's why they paid so much attention to making sure that it was done properly when you dancing around they were they were a guild a committed sect and that's why when you look at those works you see three things in those works one commitment consistency and the strive for perfection and those are the three ingredients that you can see when you look at a, an old piece from the Ife head. The level of discipline and order as at that time, you know, those were the things that you can see in those works. My used to see that my works fulfill certain uh, needs in terms of how does it contribute to the human thinking today to profile solution to the Nigerian problem.
Start going wild. Yeah, going wild. <laughs> move all those tables to that side. The, the studio changes. You know, mm -hmm. it really, it really, it really changes when I'm, I'm doing some kind of work. And sometimes I can go up there and then look at the camera to view. and put this whole canvas on the floor. We must understand the, the peculiar nature of what uh, the artist is. You know, this is uh, a, a, a profession that uh, cannot be uh, put strictly on a formal template. In other words, you go to work by 5.30 in the morning or 8 o'clock in the morning, and then you close by 6. Yes, you can decide to work with such uh, uh, references or ideas, but first and foremost, how do you evolve? Because these things, they evolve. You start from, for me, you know, as a bachelor, I had my studio in my room. The old house was my painting studio. I didn't really bother to separate the living room. Yes, that was uh, tolerable and understandable as a bachelor. And then artists would come. There was no night, there was no day. You painted at any point in time that you feel like painting, and there are days you just retire, and you're in your bedroom, you don't come out just listen to music but at that point you are still working because as you're walking to the kitchen to pick up something you look at your canvas or you retire to your room and you go and take something it's all part of work now you get married and you have children of course you're looking at uh, a life that is uh, going to be split and so, I usually recommend that let your studio be away from the house so that you can separate. Even raising a family also comes in phases because first you, when a newborn baby is born, it's, it's going to crawl over the place, might stumble into paint, there might be domestic accidents, there might be paints that are not as dry. So, all of that will be catered for if you relocate the studio away from the house. And that way you can have and control and exercise the artistic freedom that you require for your energy to flow and envelop your environment. So that's the way uh, I usually manage my studio. My studio is, uh, when I got married, you know, was never at home. And there are times I will go and come back, and there are times I sleep in the studio. It's all about uh, understanding and uh, allowing your wife to understand what you